what might have been and look at what can be. English, PE First Grade College. I am Srivani Ronak Salian, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmaceutics, PACP. We extend a warm welcome to you all on behalf of PA First Grade College and PA College of Pharmacy to the Anti-Drug and Anti-Ragging Awareness Program. Around the world, this phenomenon happen can prevent it and the reason disrupts the student's life is ragging. Every act of ragging, major or minor, is beyond the limits of decency, morality and humanity. Today, we are here to create awareness among the young minds and to question ourselves where we stand in this regard. To start with, may we all be one in mind, body and spirit as we praise and thank our almighty God for all his graces and blessings. May I now request Mr. Sahil Ismail from 3rd year B farm to recite the prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good morning. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim رجزم من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوا لعلكم تفلحون وأنفقوا في سبيل الله ولا بأيديكم إلى التهلكات وأحسنوا إن الله يحب المحسنين يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر كل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس وإثمهما وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما ويسألونك ماذا ينفقون قل العفو وكذلك يبين الله لعلكم لكم الآيات آيات لعلكم تتفكرون صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge of Allah from the shaitan the rejected one in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. O oh, people who believe wine and gamblings and idols and the dirt and the impure, the work of shaitan, therefore keep avoiding them so that you may succeed. 
and spend your wealth in Allah's cause and do not fall into rain with your own hands and be virtue uh, the writers are the beloved of Allah they ask you the degree regarding wine and gambling say my dear prophet in both it is great sin and some worldly benefit for men but their sin is greater than their benefit and they ask you what they should spend says that that which remains spare this is how Allah explains his verses to you so that you may think thank you Assalamualaikum <laughs> dignitaries on the days my dear colleagues and uh, dear dear students Before I formally welcome the dignitaries, a brief introduction to today's gathering. Today it is not a function, it is a awareness meet we can call. We, the human beings, are habituated to many different things in our lives. Human being is a social animal as all of you know and we live in a society and the society has many demands And those demands may be positive or may be negative and we have to cope up with all those demands many times. And when we start failing to cope with such demands, we try to find some alternate ways we do not face with the strength, with the challenge, but we always try to find refuge in some or the other alternate methods which may be harmful at point. It may be destructive also. We need awareness about these kind of habits that we develop to cope up certain demands and more so it is happening in the field of education in educational institutions. About 11% are actually reported in print media about some incidents happen but they are only serious. If you see properly almost 1 in 14 students will have some or the other traces in their blood. What is this? These are called as drugs or substance. We are fighting this menace called as substance abuse. This awareness is very, very important for all of us to know what are the ill effects of these uh, substances which we get habituated to. And the second part is the new students are entering the campus and many of them have uh, some inhibitions, some apprehensions about the campus. 
more than 17 percent students all across the country are reported to have some or the other bad experiences due to the menace called as ragging. When a student enter into a campus with lots of apprehension, it is actually our duty as the seniors to guide them, to console them, to reassure them. Instead, we try to intimidate, we try to scare them, which may ultimately lead to various consequences. There are many instances where dire consequences have happened because of this thing called as ragging. And ragging is not only physical assault, but also it can be a verbal uh, misbehavior or a rudeness everything includes ragging. So, to bring awareness about that, we decided to hold this meet in presence of none other than the Deputy Commissioner of Police himself because whatever the words, it should come from the horse's mouth. A police commissioner, I mean, a deputy commissioner, is the best person at this juncture to tell you about the program. And that is why when we invited uh, Mr. B.P. Dinesh Kumar, the Deputy Commissioner of Police Crime Branch, Mangaluru. He readily accepted our invitation and wholeheartedly he prepared the whole length of his PowerPoint presentation so as to reach out to you for his effort, for his presence. I wholeheartedly welcome Mr. B.P. Dinesh Kumar, welcome you, sir. I request Mr. Sarafuddin P.K. AGM Campus to welcome our chief guest, B.P. Dinesh Kumar, with a sapling. Drugs or the substances are chemical substances. They have various degree of action on the physiology of human being. And it causes very, very mild to very serious damage to the human body. And who could explain this better than a pathologist herself? And when we invited Dr. Maji Jos, Deputy Director, Center for Substance Abuse Prevention, and Dean Student Affairs, Yenopaya, deemed to be university, she readily accepted and uh, wholeheartedly she has come here and she is going to spend some time bringing awareness among you. Madam, it is uh, my privilege to welcome you on this occasion. I request Dr. Syed Amin, Dean Student Affairs and Director CMSR to welcome Dr. Maji Jose with a sapling.
no function would be or no meet would be complete without the presence of the esteemed uh, general manager, assistant general manager of uh, PA campus. I hold that wholeheartedly welcome Mr. Sharfuddin PK to this function, sir. It is my honor and privilege to welcome my colleague uh, uh, Dr. Sarfaraz J. Hashim, Dr. Sajish Raghunathan, Dr. Syed Amin, and the Director of Purchase, Mr. Harris T.D., to this August function. The meet would be highly incomplete without the presence of the most important audience that is you the students. It is my uh, privilege to welcome all of you to this meet. Welcome. I would like so I would also like to welcome all the teaching and non-teaching staff come once one and all if I have missed anybody, it is not intentional. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and welcome to you too. Great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role, but always about the goal. We are extremely honored to have here with us today an eminent and distinguished personality, Mr. Bangalore City. He hails from Madikeri, Kodagu district. He has graduated MSc Biosciences from Mangalgangotri Mangalore University, Konaje. Sir has been worked as a teacher and lecturer, Navodaya Vidyalaya Madikeri, Bharati Junior College, Maragodu, and Government Senior College, Madikeri. Sir has joined Police Department in 1994 as sub-inspector. He has underwent basic training for a year at Karnataka Police Academy, Mysore, and practical training for a year at Myco Layouts Police Station, Bangalore. He worked as a sub-inspector at Bangalore, Mudigiri, and Malpe. On promotion as a police inspector, worked at Udupi, Bindur, Brahmavara, Manipal, Krishnarajanagar, Mescom, and Karnataka Lokayukta, Mandya, and Udupi. On promotion as DSP, worked at anti naxal Force Kundapur Subdivision and Madikeri Subdivision. He has promoted as SP and presently posted in Mangalore. Now I request our Honorable Chief Guest to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Ellarigo. Namaskara. A lovely morning to all. First of all, I would like, like to express my deepest gratitude to the organizers of this program for having invited me to this function and made me address you all. You, the younger generation of India. It is very unfortunate to find that the drugs have become the newest trend. And it is seen that the younger generation have become so much obsessed to follow anything new or which is a trend. So is the case of drugs. Nowadays, the younger generation have so much obsession for drugs. As the head of crime and traffic of Mangaluru city, I find drug abuse has got a direct link with the crimes as well as the accidents that we see daily. It is seen that one amongst 
फाइव एक्सीडेंट केसेस एस्पेशली फेटल केसेस वी सी ड्रग एब्यूज इन अदर नॉन फेटल केसेस वन एमंग्स टेन वी फाइंड ड्रग एब्यूज सिमिलरली इज द केस ऑफ क्राइम्स मे बी ए मर्डर केस मे बी ए an attempt to murder case or for that matter a hurt or a theft in all cases we find the influence of drugs i will only be speaking in brief about what drugs are because the other guest will be speaking entirely about the effects of drugs i will be speaking about the laws which are enacted to curtail drug abuse maybe because as i was told only a few cases of drug abuse is being seen in the premises maybe you might have heard a single cigarette which contains tobacco it costs not less than 150 rupees to 200 rupees and you all know these drugs including tobacco they are highly addictive if you use one definitely you will have to use another and it goes on and where to get the money there is a saying you can either beg borrow or steal finally you will land up in stealing or something like theft these drugs especially what you call ganja cannabis it is highly addictive a cigarette may hold a few grams of ganja which may cost up to around 150 to 200 rupees maybe all of you are well aware of what drugs are because as i have told this is a trend college authorities will have asked many guests to speak over drug abuse so drugs they are chemical substances which affect the body so what these drugs are as you all know all medicines are drugs but not all drugs are medicines in a case you feel a headache or a bodily pain what will you do so you will have to go for some analgesic may be a paracetamol dolo 650 what are these these are drugs so definitely there will be a confusion what is drug abuse and what these medicines are so you will find two types of drugs one is legal drug and the one is illegal drug what these legal drugs do or what's the use of these legal drugs they are used for the cure of some of the other ailments of the body then what these illegal drugs are illegal drugs are con consumed in order to get a state of maybe drunkenness okay 
what are the usually abused drugs maybe i am sure all have consumed drugs because first of all you all may be knowing of the drug caffeine have all of you heard about this drug caffeine sure because we all have tasted either coffee or tea so this has a drug which is called caffeine so what this does this is as you all know it stimulates us it gets us into a state of activeness similarly along with this caffeine we have alcohol we have another drug nicotine nicotine is the active ingredient of tobacco these are recreational drugs which when consumed give us pleasure and these drugs as you all know are very much needed for curing ailments so what these drugs do first of all they will have an effect on the central nervous system and it affects how a person thinks feels or behaves so it has an effect on the central nervous system that is the brain so now going into the different types of drugs first of all as i have said they are the stimulants caffeine nicotine cannabis as well as cocaine so i'll explain you what cocaine is what cannabis is later on what it does it increases the activity of brain it increases the heart rate increases the blood pressure increases the temperature and these stimulants they are also called as uppers they help you improve your mood next coming on to the second type these are the depressants examples are alcohol cannabis opioids that is heroin morphine and codeine what it does it slows down the functions of the central nervous system it affects concentration coordination and the ability to respond and the third type are the halogenins hallucinogens examples are cannabis and lsd lysergic acid diethyl amide what it does it changes your sense of reality the way you see the way you hear taste smell or feel things in a different manner and you may have unusual thoughts feelings etc as i have said the most common drug of abuse is along with caffeine nicotine which is a highly addictive stimulant or drug which is found in tobacco it creates a momentary feeling of elation or high leading to addiction it is as addictive as heroin or cocaine which makes it extremely difficult to quit maybe students will be into smoking it is observed that those who smart smoking before the age of 21 they have the hardest time breaking the habit physical effect being rapid heartbeat shortness of breath increased blood pressure and they have increased risk of lung diseases heart diseases and stroke 
and the withdrawal symptoms being anxiety, anger, restlessness, insomnia or loss of sleep. As you can see, shortness of breath, what that means? If you are an athlete, first of all, I request each and everyone to have some sort of exercise. You will have to be indulging in some sort of exercises daily. If you continuously or you are in a habit of smoking, definitely you will have problem in running. You can't run even 100 meters because that affects your breathlessness, shortness of breath. So, indulging in smoking, definitely it is very bad for health. For this reason, the government has enacted one law that is called COTPA, C-O-T-P-A. Cigarettes and other tobacco products, prohibition of advertisement and regulation of trade and commerce, production, supply and distribution in the year 2003. So in this Code Act, Section 3 gives the definitions of various words. Section 4 prohibits smoking in public place. Maybe all are aware, smoking is prohibited in any public place. Section 5 prohibits any advertisement and after section 20 punishment sections are given and I am sure that in all educational institutions maybe something around 100 to 200 meters there should not be any shop which sells cigarettes or any other products of tobacco it is punishable Then I think you might have heard the term e-cigarettes or electronic cigarettes. Nowadays, electronic cigarettes have also become a trend. For this, the law enacted is prohibition of electronic cigarettes, production, manufacture, import, export, transport, sale, distribution, storage and advertisement. So this act was enacted in the year 2019. In this, section 4 explains about the prohibition for sale, transport, import, export, manufacture, distribution, anything that is illegal that is prohibited. Punishment in this case, for the first time, users for the first time will be imprisoned for a term that may extend to one year or may be fined with one rupee one, uh, one lakh rupees or with both second and subsequent offense imprisonment for a term which may extend to three years and fine up to five lakhs section 13 says that all the offenses here are cognizable so i will explain to you what cognizable is in meantime Finally, we are about to look into a act or law which is very stringent. Punitive action is more here and I find it very much essential that each and every student will have a thought about this act and should be well versed so what will happen so if you abuse drugs so here what are narcotic drugs 
बिकॉज द आक्ट इस नारकोटिक ड्रग्स एंड सैकोट्रोपिक सब्सटेंस आक्ट सो वाट आर् नारकोटिक ड्रग्स दोस् ड्रग्स विच इंड्यूज स्ली आर् कॉल एस नारकोटिक ड्रग्स एंड सिमिलरली द सब्सटेंस विच मॉडिफाइज द मैंड आर् कॉल एस सैकोट्रोपिक सब्सटेंस ओके ए ब्रीफ अबउट वाट मेड द एनाक्टमेंट ऑफ दिस लॉ वाट वॉज द नेसेसिटी टू इनाक्ट दिस लॉ दिस एन डी पी एस ऐक्ट केम इन टू फोर्स इन दर नाइनटीन एटी फाइव अर्लियर टू नाइनटीन एटी फाइव देर नो रेग्युलर लॉस और स्ट्रिंजेंट लॉस वेर एंड देर and you can see smoking of cannabis or ganja it is mentioned in the atharva veda and the recreational use of cannabis was common and acceptable in the indian society in the ancient period until 1985 cannabis and its derivatives like marijuana bang there were <coughs> sold legally in the markets after the un drug convention the ndps act came into existence and you can also see our constitution article 47 it states that the state shall endeavor to prohibit intoxicating drinks and drugs that are injurious to health what are the objectives of this act to establish stringent provisions for the control regulation and supervision of the illegal possession sale transit consumption of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances also they have made a mention one more act is there that is pit ndps prevention of illegal trafficking of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances this is also very stringent in the pit ndps act whoever has got any ill gotten wealth from the trafficking of these drugs all the ill gotten wealth will be confiscated to the government so this acts act ndps act it consists of 83 sections and is divided into six chapters chapter 4 deals with the provisions of the offense penalties and punishment okay now let's see which are all the drugs that are abused and how they are classified first of all it is classified as natural drugs semi synthetic drugs and synthetic drugs so what all these natural drugs natural drugs they are obtained naturally for example one is the opium poppy you might have heard the term opium so this is a plant of the species papaver somniferum similarly another one is cannabis or the commonly called ganja plant this is the plant of genus cannabis and the third one is coca plant of any species of the genus erythroxylum this second plant ganja or cannabis it is widely grown in india whereas the coca it is the native of south america and opium poppy is also grown in the certain asian countries thus opium ganja hashish hashish oil coca leaves and coca paste 
these are all natural drugs. Then coming on to semi-synthetic drugs, these natural drugs, they are treated chemically to either alter or isolate its active ingredients or to modify it. Morphine, codeine, heroin, etc. These are the semi-synthetic drugs produced from the natural product opium. Similarly, cocaine is a semi-synthetic drug produced from coca plant. Then coming on to the synthetic drugs. Synthetic drugs are purely chemicals. They are produced through chemical processes. Examples are amphetamines, ecstasy, diazepam, methaquinone, commonly called as mandrax. This ecstasy is also called as MDMA. These are the sy synthetic drugs drugs. Now coming on to the punishment. In the NDPS Act, drug abuse is measured in terms of quantity. Three different categories are made. One is small quantity. Second one is lesser than commercial quantity and greater than small quantity. And the third one is commercial quantity. The quantity for different drugs and its category is not uniform and it is different for different types of drugs. For example, a small quantity of charas is 100 grams whereas its commercial quantity is 1 kg. Whereas, small quantity of ganja is 1 kg, whereas the commercial quantity is 20 kgs. Similarly, small quantity of MDMA or ecstasy is 0.5 grams, whereas its commercial quantity is 10 grams. So, you will have to be well aware how much quantity determines how much punishment. So I have a brief note about how much the small quantity and the commercial quantity is for certain drugs. As you can see, MDMA ecstasy small quantity is 0.5 grams and commercial quantity is 10 grams. Similarly, ganja small quantity is 1 kg and commercial quantity is 20 kgs. And poppy straw, small quantity is 1 kg, whereas the commercial quantity is 50 kgs. It is equal to have 50 kgs of poppy straw or 20 kgs of ganja or 10 grams of MDMA to make it a serious offense. Before you learn about how or what the punishments are, so I would like to give you a brief idea of what laws are. In fact, we, the police or the law enforcing agency, we refer three major books. These are epic books. One is Indian Penal Code. I hope you might have heard about these books. Another one is Criminal Procedure Code. And the third is Indian Evidence Act. What this IPC is? In fact, the IPC, it came into force in the year 1860. It was left out by the Britishers. It explains what is an offence? What is the punishment for an offence? For example, the definition of an offence goes like this. Any act which is done by any person 
if there is any punishment that means it is an offense so you are free to move your hands when you are alone when you are in an empty space but when you are in a crowd if you swing your hand and your hand touches another man's body it will be an offense it is defined in the indian penal code for example if you hit a person with your hand it is punishable under section 323 of ipc if you hit a person with any instrument maybe a stick it amounts to an offense under section 324 similarly if a person is killed by another person which we call it as murder and it is explained in section 302 it is called as 302 ipc similarly we call it half murder or attempt to murder it is 307 307 ipc maybe most of you are wondering what these sections are but in ipc 511 sections are there it is explained in detail the definitions are given as well as the punishments are given then coming on to the criminal procedure code it gives the procedure as to how police work how the courts work maybe you might have heard of the term fir or first information report whenever any offense has occurred so you report to a police station that will form the first information report similarly this crpc will explain as you have already seen a term cognizable offense what is a cognizable offense a cognizable offense is one in which a police officer can arrest without warrant no need for a warrant from any court to arrest any person who has committed an offense cognizable offense similarly we have non cognizable offense wherein the police cannot arrest without a warrant another term that needs to be understood is bail what is a bail what is a bailable offense what is a non bailable offense why you need to understand these terms is this is very important if you are into ndps or narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act bail means it is a right of a person whenever any person who is accused of a cognizable offense and the punishment for which is less than 7 years he is bound to be released on bail police are bound to release any person who is arrested who has committed an offense which is punishable for a term which is less than 7 years maybe 6 months 1 year 2 years 3 years or 7 years we have to release on bail then what are these non bailable offenses non bailable offenses are those in which the police cannot release an accused on bail he will be sent to jail you have to understand this term because all in most of the cases in most cases which involve commercial quantity of drugs 
those offenses are non bailable ones once you are arrested once it is found that you are in possession of a commercial quantity of a drug you will not be released on bail you will have to land up in jail because we have come across certain cases wherein these drug peddlers they use students i repeat uh, those drug peddlers they use students for trafficking of drugs maybe you might be going in a bus one unknown person approaches you with a small packet wherein an address has been written on it he may ask you to hand it over to some person whose name is on the envelope and he may give you some amount of money maybe 1000 rupees 5000 rupees you may think hey, it's a very small packet what is there if i can hand it over to the other person anyway i am going to get money that packet that parcel may contain any drug as you know 10 grams of mdma drug is commercial quantity if the police find you definitely you will be in jail so for that reason you will have to understand certain terms of the indian penal code then coming into evidence act this is also very much important first of all police use this evidence act whenever an fir is registered in a police station police will investigate the case we will charge sheet the case and send it to the court if the contents of the charge sheet that means that any person who has committed an offense that has to be proved that has to be proved accordance with the indian evidence act in accordance with the indian evidence act that has to be proved before the court in evidence act there is one provision presumption of innocence in general cases maybe in a case of murder maybe in a case of an attempt to murder maybe in case of a rape or any serious offense the general provision is that the police have to prove that the accused person has committed that offense for example a person fires a gun on an animal it accidentally accidentally hits a human being in general terms when that man has died because of the gunshot that amounts to murder it has to be proved that the person did not have any intention of killing that man in fact he has just fired on that animal and it accidentally hit the man and killed him this the police have to prove that whether that person had the intention to kill or just the knowledge that if he misses a hit at that animal if any person is moving on that side and if the shot hits the man if he is killed that amounts to culpable homicide not amounting to murder 
here he did not have any intention to kill that man accidentally that man killed got killed so this the police have to prove that the person whether he had the knowledge he had the intention to kill that man but in the case of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act it is for the accused or the person who is having that commercial quantity of drugs to prove that he is innocent unless and until he himself proves that he is innocent he will be in jail and he will not be let free so each and every one who have gathered here please so most of you are indulged in talking amongst him yourselves i request you please listen to what i am telling to because we have seen drug traffickers are using students for trafficking and the students unknowingly they will land up in trouble so whenever you meet any unknown person we receive anything from unknown person you have to be very very careful and uh, another thing in uh, regular cases bail is a right a person is bound to be released on bail if he gives some surety or security to the court in non bailable cases but in the case of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances you will have to prove your innocence even for bail you will not be granted bail if you are caught with commercial quantity of drugs in regular cases there are different courts that deal with the trial of cases but in the case of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances it is compulsory that a special court is formed and minimum judge rank of the judge will be the additional sessions judge or it it will be tried in the sessions court offenses and penalties so now we will look into what the offenses are and what the punishment is whoever found cultivating opm cannabis or coca plants without license rigorous imprisonment up to 10 years along with fine of rupees 1 lakh you may be wondering in what way we are concerned with cultivation we have seen in many cases in even in hostels or in pgs students have got the habit of cultivating a single plant of cannabis ganja we have seen students growing a single plant or many plants in that can be grown in their house even if you are caught you will be punished with a rigorous imprisonment of 10 years and fine of rupees 1 lakh similarly production manufacture possession so this is what i told you possession then sale purchase transport import interstate export interstate or use of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances if you are found with a small quantity rigorous imprisonment up to 6 months or fine up to 6 10000 rupees or with both if it is small, more than small quantity but less than commercial quantity rigorous imprisonment up to 10 years 
and fine of rupees 1 lakh and if it is commercial quantity it is rigorous imprisonment from 10 to 20 years along with fine of 1 to 2 lakhs moving further knowingly allowing one's premises to be used for committing an offence same as for the offence financing traffic and harboring offenders that means if you know any person who is indulging in any of these activities and you are supporting him that amounts to harboring an offender imprisonment for 10 to 20 years and fine of rupees 1 to 2 lakhs if there is any attempt abetment or criminal conspiracy same as for the offence if there is any preparation to commit an offence half the punishment of the offence just preparation it is enough and as I have already said it is left to you to prove that you are innocent you are not you were not preparing for any offence in this act if the offence is repeated one and a half times the punishment for the offence and in some cases you can see death penalty death penalty is also given in the NDPS cases maybe you might have heard in most cases for example in some of the sensational murder cases even death penalty is not given whereas in NDPS narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances if anything relating to commercial quantity is observed death penalty will be awarded <coughs> then coming to consumption of drugs in all most of the colleges in Mangaluru we are finding students who are consuming drugs what is the punishment for consuming drugs if it is cocaine morphine or heroin rigorous imprisonment up to one year or fine up to rupees 20,000 or with both and if it is other drugs imprisonment up to six months and fine up to rupees 10,000 or both so if anyone is found <coughs> smoking even ganja he will be arrested because as I have said it is all offenses are cognizable and police can arrest without warrant and you will be sent to jail and you will have to be or you will be fined you will be imprisoned, imprisoned for a period of six months or you will have to pay fine rupees 10,000 or with both and one more thing if you are volunteering to give up drugs then there is the immunity from prosecution so here I need to mention that Mangaluru city police we are into a mission of creating drug free Mangaluru silence please we want to create drug free Mangaluru for that reason we have from the police of Mangaluru city we have formed 16 teams we have 16 teams which are headed by one sub-inspector we have identified some 300 colleges which ranges from even high schools up to professional colleges we as team are going to different colleges first of all we meet the teaching as well as the non-teaching staff of the college we will have some data about the students who might have been abusing drugs while we were talking in the morning so madam was telling 
we will come to know whether a student is in a habit of drugs or not looking to the fact whether he is a regular absentee a boy or a girl who regularly abstains from going to the college will have or there is a probability that they are into drugs and we have identified some 150000 students and our team has visited various colleges and they have spoken to the students and they have informed about the severity of this act as well as the problems of drug abuse so my dear friends i request each and everyone gathered here one motto say no to drugs as i have said possession of drug in itself it is an offense the punishment does not depend on whether the possession or purchase is for personal use or for resale but it depends upon the quantity of the drug consumption of drugs as i have said is punishable under section 27 of ndps act if you are ready to give up drugs there is immunity from prosecution and also we have been telling if any student is found indulging in drugs definitely we will not book a case on him definitely we will allow the addiction and in the case of prosecution if any case is registered even though there is immunity if the addict does not undergo the complete treatment of de addiction the immunity will be withdrawn i have already told offenses under commercial quantities are non bailable okay i think something might have gone into your mind that is first and foremost thing they will that you will have to bear in mind any offense under this ndps act is cognizable police can arrest without warrant and it is non bailable and it is very difficult to prove that you are innocent and it is very difficult for you to come scot free and one more topic that was given to me or it is with regard to the anti ragging but while i entered into the premises this is for the first time that i am coming into your premises wonderful wonderful i feel privileged to be speaking to you in such a wonderful auditorium even <laughs> definitely i feel that you students or you being students of this prestigious institution you also feel the same as i was entering the campus i saw a good number of motorcycles and inside also i saw a good number of cars one thing that came to my mind was along with this speech on drugs as well as anti ragging one more important thing that is needed is awareness 
about the traffic rules. I am a regular visitor of this area, even though I am not coming to this college. So I regularly move along Tokoto, Derlakate, Konaje, Mudipu, etc. I have seen that 90% of the bike riders are not in the habit of wearing helmets. Maybe the same is the case with the students even. I think I can uh, take some more time, madam. So it is a must that each and every rider or a driver knows about the traffic rules. To the, for the controlling of traffic, we have got different laws. One major law is the Indian Motor Vehicle Act. This was formulated in the year 1989 and regularly there have been amendments. The recent amendment in the year 2022, it states that if any accident, any vehicle is met with an accident, if any rider of a motorcycle is found riding without a helmet, if anyone is seen carrying or triple riding because two-wheeler is for only two not for excess but we see students or people carrying more than two similarly if any person is caught going against one way if any person is driving under the influence of drugs maybe alcohol in all these cases the driving license of the person who is riding or driving the vehicle will be suspended the driving license will be suspended and in some cases the registration of the vehicles are even cancelled if a driving license is suspended if at all you drive a vehicle without a driving license also in cases wherein the persons who drive the vehicle doesn't have a license or another mandatory thing is you will have to have that vehicle should have insurance most of the people don't know the importance of insurance importance of insurance is whenever a vehicle meets with an accident if anyone is injured if anyone is has died then if that vehicle has got the insurance the insurance company people they will pay for the repair of the vehicle the treatment of the injured as well as the insurance with regard to the person who is who has died in some cases you should know that insurance may up to go up to 1 crore or 2 crores the court will decide the amount of insurance that has to be paid for the person who is injured or who has died depending on the age the profession and the earnings if a young person who is working in a maybe a IT industry he is earning lakhs of rupees a month if he meets with an accident then the accused person he through the insurance company they may have to pay more than a crore but 
in cases if it happens that that person is killed by a vehicle which doesn't have insurance which driver doesn't have a driving license then the insurance company will not pay the insurance amount that has to be borne by the person who is the registered owner of the vehicle the registered owner of the vehicle he is not supposed to give his vehicle to a person who doesn't have a driving license and also he is bound to have insurance of his vehicle so all students please bear in your mind before riding or driving any vehicle you please see that whether you have a driving license whether that vehicle has an insurance covered if at all you don't have a driving license and if that vehicle doesn't have an insurance coverage please do not go for a ride if something happens because accident is accident we can't foresee an accident it can happen because of any reason as i have said maybe the other person he may be under the influence of any drug influence of any alcohol you may be going along <coughs> the right path in many cases we have seen that the vehicles coming on the opposite road wherein there are dividers they have crossed the dividers and they have hit the person who is driving on the other road so you will have to be very careful and here we are seeing because there are no underpasses or flyovers for the pedestrians to cross the road they keep on regularly crossing the roads and maybe you may be the one who may hit that pedestrian and you will get into trouble so you will have to bear this is my this in mind and one more thing importance of helmet and that too with isi mark it is compulsory because we have seen that in most of the cases in accidents the death is due to head injury a few days back there was an accident near mulki in a cross road a four wheeler suddenly emerged into the main road and bike rider along with the pillion pillion they were going suddenly it hit the car both fell down and incidentally the pillion rider was a girl her head hit the road and she died instantly had she own the helmet definitely her life would have been saved students you have to think about the agony of the parents who have lost their young children so we'll have to bear in your mind you have will have to follow these traffic rules okay i don't won't take much time of yours but it is mandatory to follow all the traffic rules and one amended act of central motor vehicle act that also has got very stringent punishment with regard to the insurance insurance will not be paid by the insurance companies the owner or the registered owner of the vehicles they have to bear the insurance please keep this in your mind okay then coming on to anti ragging i have heard that in mangaluru the cases regarding ragging is very less i don't think there is any ragging in this college because all are well aware 
of the after effects of ragging even though we do not have any specific rules or law in karnataka with regard to ragging all will be dealt with as i have already told about ipc indian penal code what all acts you do if you tease a girl it may amount to <coughs> outraging the modesty of a woman that amounts to an offense under section a punishment under section 354 if you abuse any person it will be fine not 4 of ipc if you give any life threat that amounts to 506 of ipc if you hit a person with your hand that is 323 ipc if you hit a person with any object that amounts to 324 so anything that is done as ragging definitely it is an offense and will be dealt in accordance to the provisions of indian penal code similarly there are various provisions in the institutions even definitely you will land in trouble one and the last thing what i would like to emphasize on students is definitely enquiry or verification is needed for each and every student because maybe you may be interested in getting your passports if at all you need a passport your antecedents will be verified in the police station <coughs> in which limits you reside or you may go into any jobs take for example a government job or any job in any private sector your antecedents will be verified if at all you indulge in any of the cases if your name is entered in the police station records definitely when an enquiry <coughs> with regard to your passport or any verification comes definitely you will land in trouble you will not get noc at least for the reason of no objection certificate from the police it is mandatory for you all to not get your name registered in the police station for unwanted reasons lastly i request each and every one who are gathered here to inform the police about any offenses which occurs in your surrounding to the police mission of mangaluru police to create drug free mangaluru will not be achieved unless and until you the student support us i request you to support us in making mangaluru or not just mangaluru anywhere we reside entire india to be drug free i thank each and every one especially the organizers as well as the faculty of this pa institution for having me talk to the students which i like the most because once students get to know about the laws the work of police will become easier 
thank I once again thank each and every one of you thank you all thank you thank you sir for sharing your expertise and insight with us today we have amidst us dr maji jos dean student affairs enapoya deemed to be university she has been the deputy director center for substance abuse prevention enapoya deemed to be university Ma'am has been oral pathologist by profession with over 28 years of experience in teaching for the undergraduate and postgraduate dental students. Ma'am has obtained PhD as vice principal in Anapoya Dental College served for 4 years primarily looking after the undergraduate academics and significantly contributed to students welfare and streamlining undergraduate academic activities later promoted as dean student affairs yanapoya deemed to be university so working as deputy director center for substance abuse prevention received best teacher award from enapoya deemed to be university ma'am has published 84 scientific publications in reputed scientific journals authored two textbooks namely manual of oral histology and oral pathology and textbook of oral biology serving as a member of many college and university committees including malpractice enquiry committee of the university presently ma'am is pursuing msw in counseling from indira gandhi national open university new delhi mr bp dinesh kumar now i request dr sarfraz de hasim principal pa college of first grade college to felicitate the chief guest the dignitaries on the dais our uh, esteemed faculty members and my dear students it's an honor and privilege to stand before you today particularly when we are discussing about two important issues that has grabbed the campuses of our country particularly drug and ragging these are the two menaces that we all as you know the teaching fraternity we struggle to handle in our campuses at this outset i congratulate the management and the organizing committee for choosing this topic and also giving me a chance to interact with the students so when i think of these two uh, topics i would like to quote the boy who has recited the prayer i don't understand arabic but i heard the translation i would take that particular you know sentence which he has told the acts of satan is it correct yes yeah i would say these two things ragging and drugs these are definitely acts of satan let me elaborate only somebody who is under the influence of satan can do ragging because you know that a student who walks into a campus particularly leaving their family behind maybe first time to the hostel they come in with lot of apprehension lot of scared and tension so at that particular time instead of being a consolation to them and being a good friend or an elder sister or elder brother for them and instead torturing them mentally and physically this act can only be done by a satan do you agree with me yes. 
yes and definitely if i take drugs i would say any saint or an any angel will automatically become a satan once they are under the influence of drugs yes or no yes so let us all try to be away from these two satans so i would request all the students to take a moment and think of the day you have come to this campus and take your juniors as your younger brothers and younger sisters and let us take a decision with my batch this chain is going to be broken because it's my personal experience as a dean student affairs whenever we deal with any situation where the juniors and ra seniors are having problems they say that when we came our seniors did that to us i know that you know like a probably some of you would have undergone some you know uh, unpleasant situation but continuing it to the next generation is not justifiable so let us all take a decision today we with my batch we are going to take a decision that you know we are going to break the chain though we had some bad experience with our seniors we are not going to continue the same with our juniors rather we are going to be loving brothers and sisters or you know like a companions for our juniors shall we take a decision yeah thank you very much so now i am going with the topic which is given to me that is you know choose life that and not drugs so you know like our dcp sir has given a power packed presentation with lot of information i know that you are all you know like a filled with information so just to you know break or you know bring your mind out of that i would like to play one video are you all ready to hear Let's see okay so when you listen to this video it's a song it's a beautiful song all of you enjoy the song at the same time pay perfect attention and i am i'm seeing lot of my uh, friends there boys and i know that i'm seeing the teachers going around and then trying to you know bring in their attention so i request all the boys sitting behind and all the girls sitting in front to give me undivided attention for 5 minutes will you give me yeah undivided attention all the girls should think that the boy who is acting in this video is your the most loved younger brother or elder brother while all the boys sitting there should think that it is you yourself in that particular situation with that feeling please watch this video 5 minutes
క్షణంలో నిన్నే చూసి లోకం చి అంటుంటే పాపం నిన్నే కన్నా ప్రాణం ఏడుస్తోంది చూడు I hope all of you have paid attention. Uh, this is all what I have to tell you today. I never look at this video because I have a son of the same age. And I'm sure that any parent, any father or mother who are having children of the same age can watch this video without, you know, eyes getting filled with yours okay so let's come out of it yeah so let me start I'm giving a very brief presentation so first of all greetings from Enapoya deemed to be University and I, I, I come from this campus I'm very proud to be a part of Enapoya deemed to be University So to begin with, what are these substances? Sir has already mentioned these substances what we are talking are nothing but drugs. These substances, they are, you know, that they change, they alter the brain and causes change in the behavior. We, these are the substances we are basically concerned about. And why are we talking so much about drugs? Why your teachers have taken so much time out of your valuable, you know, academic hours to enlighten you about this topic because of the implications of drugs? So if you look at, you know, there are so many implications, but I would like to highlight only few. That is, first of all, addiction, and then medical problems or the health issues caused by substances, and the economic issues are, like, you know, country is facing, and also drugs as a social issue. Being a medical professional, I can, you know, like uh, underline and I can confirm it with you. It's not a myth or it is anybody's imagination. The change that the drugs causes on the brain. It causes fundamental changes on the brain and makes a person very, very difficult to come out of it. And ultimately a person gets addicted to substance. And why it is of great concern for you people, the youngsters who are sitting here, probably those who are on the dais, we are totally, maybe I can say out of danger. But you youngsters, it's very, very important for you because young adults and the adolescents are highly susceptible to addiction because your brain is still in the formative stage, in the developing stage and that is why you have got a lot of energy and also you would like to take some you know like a risky behavior that's because your brain is still in the process of development so such brains actually is susceptible to hierarchy hijack so I would like to remind each one of you sitting here the young adults 
please don't get into any of this risky behavior because there is a high tendency for you people to get addicted to this and definitely as a health professional it's a great concern to me that you know the health effects of substance abuse i don't want to name the diseases that will take uh, taken care of by the doctors so for a person for a patient it is not the name of the disease it is the sufferings that a person undergoes because of the substance use that is a matter of concern so this slide shows you any of the substances it's not going to do any anything good for your body rather it damages each and every part of your body you name it maybe tobacco marijuana alcohol cocaine anything you take it's going to be having damaging effect on your body so it is for the sake of health it is better to be away from these things then this is one question many of my young friends ask me is it such a you know bad thing to use tobacco because they you know that the you know our uh, like a society has taken it very lightly because we are seeing big big things mdma and ganja and suppose your teacher or your parent comes to know that a student is using tobacco they say thank god it is only tobacco it is not ganja I have heard personally this that is why I am telling you but let me tell you if any of the youngsters sitting here has a doubt whether tobacco is bad I would like you know like with the strong conviction I can say tobacco is extremely bad because I am a pathologist I sit and write the report of cancer cases if anybody has a doubt I invite you to come to Zuleka Yenapoya Oncology Center you can see the number of people suffering the number of people seeking treatment because of tobacco related cancer so tobacco is bad so and for youngsters you might say the tobacco causes cancer after a long use of tobacco but let me mind you tobacco is a gateway drug that's a name given to tobacco because tobacco opens the door to all other illegal drugs not only that biologically it causes the changes in the brain makes the brain more susceptible to other addiction so if anybody has a doubt let me tell you tobacco in any form of use let it be cigarette or let it be bd gutka pan masala snuff it is going to be dangerous for your health and i would like to call the attention of all the students sitting here because you must have been very excited to hold a cigarette in hand or some of you would have been excited to see someone holding a cigarette i whenever i see any small shop in front of that when the youngsters stand and smoke to glory i feel so pity on them i feel they are so foolish please remember the beautiful cigarette if anybody offers you and one more thing i'll tell you first cigarette is always a gift nobody buys the first cigarette if anybody offers you a cigarette please bring in this picture into your mind the beautiful white cigarette with a border of golden color it is nothing but a cocktail of poisons 4000 poisons chemicals are inhaled when somebody smokes a cigarette out of that around 40 are cancer causing so please remember keep yourself away from cigarettes so let me just draw the attention of girls also because these days you know when we do the raid of our ladies hostel very rarely we get thin cigarette mild cigarette let me mind you there is nothing called as a safe cigarette or mild cigarette for ladies all cigarettes contain tobacco and it is damaging for your mind and body let me tell you and definitely it is a social evil that you know it you have seen it in your like you know that video 
how it is a socially evil any drugs it causes relationship issues and it causes a lot of social issues let us just forget about it but for youngsters who are sitting here many of you have come to the campus for the first time or you know you are in the initial days of your campus let me just enlighten you because it's very important to stay away from this you have to know how it begins and progress so let us see any story of a drug addict it begin with initiation so initiation you see how many people are there in the uh, like a picture one person it may be because of the pressure from the friends or due to any other reason somebody decides to use any substance of abuse individually that person is taking a decision willfully saying yes to that that is initiation but the moment a person uses a substance who will join that person the addictive substance in that particular substance if you take tobacco the nicotine in the tobacco it's highly addictive that uh, you know like a addictive substance joins and pushes that person deeper and deeper into addiction and then what happens ultimately that person reaches a stage that they are totally fallen into addiction they cannot survive without using that substance and without a help from another person it is very very difficult for such a person to come out so i draw your attention most important is don't initiate it don't because that time you are alone you can take independent decision say no to drug don't start it and why people use it i know that each and every one sitting here knows drugs are bad is there anybody thinks drugs are good i don't think so drugs are bad sir said okay it is there are medicines are also drugs we are not talking about that illegal drugs it's bad everybody knows from childhood from the school days your teachers and your parents are telling you stay away from it but still people use it why there are two reasons one is the risk taking behavior of youngsters the youngsters want to have new experiences they want to try out new things and they want to share it with others and on the other hand there are people who think drugs is a solution for their problems maybe stress tension breakups main thing these days young generation relationship breakup this is a new terminology for us okay so these are some of the excuses the students give but then what happens due to some reason people take it then ultimately this is the condition would you like to be in this situation i don't think anybody any of us want to be fools like this right yeah so the message for you is prevention is better than cure now some tips for you sir has already told you about the legal aspects of it so let me talk about how we can because you might think that it is very easy for an elderly elderly lady to stand on the dais and preach and preach that you know like you do this do this you the only we know the stress what we are going through many of you may be thinking that but i understand that you know the condition what you are going through it may not be very pleasant but then there let me tell you some tips for you how you can stay away from all these things first thing is strong conviction strong conviction what should be your conviction the drugs take you to hell disguised it as a heaven because your friends may tell you take a puff and you feel that you are you are floating you are in the heaven okay but then later you realize that you have gone even beyond hell so please remember drugs take you to hell disguising you it as heaven 
and then be cautious be aware and sir has already mentioned the drug peddlers main target is educational institutions because their main customers are youngsters where are they they are in the educational institution we have even heard that the drug peddlers sponsor the students to join various institutions so that they can attract more customers so beware of that educational institutions and surroundings are actually targets of drug peddlers be very careful don't fall prey to them and then all of you should set a goal why have i come to this college to pa campus your dreams your parents dreams your teachers dreams set a good goal you have come here to develop you uh, know like a to get into a good career so set a goal for yourself and stop before you start learn to say big no very very strongly you have to say no if any of your friend offers you any substances of abuse that's an art you have to say no which you don't agree to and in addition to that you should develop some healthy you know lifestyle and also you should have close relationship with your relatives and friends because i request all the hostelites to call your parents at least once a day so that they will share their dreams for you you can share your dreams with them these all things will motivate you to be away from any of the blocks that comes in front of you from you developing into a good person and definitely you have to say engaged you know that you all of you are aware of our old saying idle mind is a devil's workshop so where did we start with satan's activity we don't want to fall prey to satan's activity keep yourself engaged and all of us need some motivation in life even as an elderly lady even i have to have some happiness and motivation in life then what about the youngsters so do something which makes you happy okay and then the last thing remember alcohol tobacco or drugs is not a solution for the problems in life many of them are totally devoid of any problems problems of the students are different problems of teachers are different problems of parents are different i would say all of you must have seen the ecg as long as our life is on it will have ups and downs and only place where you see nil problem is graveyard so till we reach there we will have problems in life be courageous face it and instead of taking refuge in any of the substances as a temporary solution and this is an important thing for you because many a times youngsters you know fall into the trap of peer pressure because i do understand because we also have gone through this situations because your friends group forces you they say that if you don't use this you are not my friend so this tremendous pressure to be in the group so please learn to say no to your friends and understand if your friends group is forcing you to do something which is unacceptable to you just get out of that friends group definitely you will have good friends waiting outside for you and you know these days the substance abuse it is not starting in the colleges rather it is starting in the school itself so if there is anybody sitting here has already started with any of these things i urge all of you to take steps accept the mistake and take steps to come out of it you take the help of your mentors you take the help of your teachers who will guide you how to come out of this problem if not if somebody is already into it and if you don't take care of it what is going to happen was well depicted in that video and few things i just want to highlight sir has already told the like you know the narcotic act many a times you know as a teacher and 
as a teacher who is taking care of a big campus of 11,000 students, every day when I watch the like you know TV news or the newspaper, I just pray I should not see any of my friend, any of my student in this situation. And I'm sure that every parent, every teacher would be wishing the same. But unfortunately, I had to face such a situation. And I'm sure that, you know, like I, I just want to tell you people, please stay away from the substances. Sir has told you, even using it, uh, you know, peddling it and even carrying it, you have to be extremely smart. Somebody may be asking you to carry a baggage from outside to college. So if you don't trust that person, don't carry it because you may be unnecessarily getting into trouble and we don't want any of you to get into this similar situation. So finally, prevention is better than cure and early intervention is desirable before a person gets into deep-seated habits. So let me close it by giving you a take-home message. A decision that is made until the age of 21 years, probably some of you, most of you would be around this age. A decision what is taken by, like, until the age of 21 could mean a difference between a life which is enslaved by addiction or a life filled with success. And I want all of you to be, and not only me, all the management people including DCP sir and all your parents sitting at home we all wish you to be the winners so please make sure that all of you keep yourself away from all the substances of abuse so be smart don't start and if anybody has started put it out before it puts you out and a few help which is available you can use it because you know these are the two initiatives of Enapoya deemed to be university by the psychiatry department there is a 24 7 you know helpline anybody can call you know that uh, somebody will be answering the call it need not be drug related issues it may be your personal issues or if you are in depression or if you want to talk to somebody uh, help will be provided so you you can note down this number or I can share it with your teachers. Please use it. They will not even ask you to reveal your identity. Okay, so if anybody is going to going through difficult situation in life, please feel free to use this facility. And if anybody wants help for you know counseling, it may be drug related or anything else. We have a you know center called as Encourage. That is situated in Enapoya Nursing Home, opposite to Cochin Bakery. All of you know Cochin Bakery, right? And also Cochin Village, uh, just next to Cochin Village. Please make use of this facility. Keep yourself safe from all the substances of abuse and all the you know psychological issues. So say yes to life and no to drug. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being wonderful audience and thanks to the management and all of you for giving me a chance to be with the peer college students. Thank you very much. So now that all of you are enlightened that you know your drug is going to be bad for you, shall we take a pledge? With wholeheartedly, how many of you are willing to take a pledge? Those who are willing to take a pledge wholeheartedly, please stand up, stretch your right hand. So I request everyone to raise your right hand and take a pledge. Repeat whatever I read. Are you ready? Yes. I recognize tobacco, I recognize tobacco. Alcohol, alcohol and all illicit drugs. As the greatest enemies to the mankind. Therefore, I pledge to abstain from the use of all substances of abuse and spread awareness 
about the hazards of the same to the community. I pledge to lead a healthy, substance-free lifestyle and will encourage my friends to go substance-free in an effort to promote health and wellness. Thank you. Now I request Dr. Sarfraz J. Hasim, Principal PA First Day College for the Presidential Address. Respected dignitaries on the dais and my dear students, before I start, I request every one of you to kindly raise, kindly raise and express gratitude to two great personalities for sparing their valuable time to us by a huge round of applause. Now you can imagine the seriousness of the problem that the entire world is facing. The DCP sir himself is personally with us for the last two and a half hours, sparing all his important work aside. So that means you know how important these two topics are. My dear students, I know you are hungry. Yes? All right. So I will not take more than two to three minutes. So I hope you can bear with me. Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Let me mention one important story. Have you heard of Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett? One of the richest person in this world. He has a passion to play golf. So all these rich people have a passion to play golf, you know that. So he along with the Bill Gates and other great richest people in this world, one day they were playing this golf. And one among them said, there is no motivation, let us keep on competition. And the competition is, the one who puts the ball into the pit in a single attempt has to be rewarded. And what to reward? They said each one of us will contribute $50. And then the volunteers started collecting money from everyone. Everyone gave except Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett said, I will not give. Then everyone said, this is a small peanut for you. It is $50. You are one among the richest person in this world. For you it is nothing. He said, no. I will not give. Then again the team members pressurized him. Maybe you are angry with me. We just want to know what is there in your mind. And Warren Buffett said, if you are stupid of these small things, you will be stupid of great things too. So he said, there is no meaning in it. We are playing not to because to gain money. We are playing out of passion to release the stress. That is, should be the motivation, not the money. And sometimes it is applicable to us. As the saying goes, if you are stupid about small things, you will be stupid about big things too. What I relate to this program is, there are a lot of people who smoke. It is a stupid manner of small thing. And the next it goes to the drugs and substance abuse and some more. Let me tell you, when you are smoking or when you are abusing the drugs or substance, you are neglecting your health. And you should remember, when you are neglecting your health, health also neglects you. Let me tell you how this uh, smoking, you know, addiction happens. There were three people who were walking on the streets. They are good friends. Out of which two of them were chain smokers. Third one did not smoke till day. So these friends, they started smoking and they gave a cigarette to this person also. Actually, he don't want to smoke, but to please his friends, he took a cigarette and started smoking. And the friends asked, how was it? 
Actually, you know, it is very sour. It is not tasty. To please his friends, he said, fantastic. What did he say? Fantastic. And when you say fantastic, you have a powerful mind within you, which knows to say yes. So your mind said yes. And automatically the taste buds are ignited. So next time also he started smoking and he felt more and more tastier. This is how the drug addicts or the smoking addiction happens. There are so many de-addiction centers. But it is a strong willpower that is required for us to stop that. So today madam has shown a very beautiful video. The moment you think of all this, immediately you think of your parents, you have your siblings, you have your relatives. How they will feel when something happens to you? That is the primary thing that we should understand. And you know, the primary goal of education is to make ourselves fearless. To make us more confident to take the challenges in our life. I don't want to say more because more, you know, the legal aspects, the physiological aspects, the psychological aspects are also covered by the two great resource persons today. Now, once a doctor was called by an NGO to address a group of alcoholics. Doctor wanted to demonstrate how alcohol caused damage to the human body. He took two beakers. In the first beaker it was the water and in the second beaker it was alcohol. And he took earthworms, you know earthworms. He took earthworms and dropped into both the beakers. After some time, the earthworm which was placed in the beaker containing water survived. And the alcohol which was placed in the beaker containing alcohol disintegrated. Then the doctor asked the group of alcoholics, what is the moral of the story? And the alcoholics happily said, if you drink alcohol, there will be no worms in your stomach. Was that the actual moral? No. This is what we call as a selective listening. So I hope... You have not selectfully listened. You have listened to everything, including the legal, the physiological and the psychological aspects of this great menace. And the next topic that we wanted to highlight today is about the ragging. Just because your juniors have born one or two years later than you, they are not your subordinates. Your duty to see that they are comfortable in the campus. Even asking them to sing a song and if the student don't like it, it is punishable under the Indian Penal Code. And asking a name in a manner which he feels as an insult is also ragging. Forget about other hazardous issues happening in the ragging. You see, there are so many people who commit suicide because they couldn't sustain the ragging. The current generation are mentally weak, some of them. Because of the food and because of the addiction with the screen. So, it is each one of us responsibility to take care of two things. Let us make this campus as a drug-free zone. And also let us make this campus as a ragging-free campus. I hope you all will cooperate to maintain the dignity of the students and if you start then the message will go out and the entire nation will be drug free and also the ragging free. I wish you all the best. Once again I thank the Deputy Commissioner of Police who was also a teacher like us before joining the police department. So that I feel it is a really passionate to be with the student. Sir has said that he will go early, but now he was there till the end of the program, keeping aside all his important tasks from all the institutions here. I express sincere gratitude to you, sir. And madam, 
who is the dean of student affairs of yenopoya deemed to be university and also heading the center for drug abuse and prevention is also madam is also very busy but still as a love towards this institution she has come here and address all of us once again i express my gratitude to you madam and to all my students who spend this about more than 3 hours in a disciplined manner let me congratulate you all to the students of pa college of pharmacy as well as pa first grade college a big salute to you all and i wish you all the best thank you very much event your precious time was of greater importance and your inspirational words words a lot to us I now request Dr. Salimullah Khan, Principal, PA College of Pharmacy, to felicitate the guest of honor, Dr. Maji Jose, with a memento as an expression of love and gratitude. Thank you, sir. Gratitude is one of the most human emotions and is a principle PA College of Pharmacy to propose the oath of thanks. First of all, I extend my most sincere thanks to the Almighty God for making today's event resounding success. We are very grateful to Mr. Abdullah Ibrahim, Managing Trustee, PAET, for his immense support to organize this event on behalf of pa college of pharmacy and pa first grade college i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest mr pb bp dinesh kumar deputy commissioner of police crime and traffic mangalore city sir your thoughts and presentation have enlightened us minds and have shown us a right path thank you sir a special thanks to our guest of honor dr maji jos deputy director center for substance abuse prevention anapai university for accepting our invitation and for being with us this morning thank you madam for that interesting and informative speech i am very thankful to mr sharfuddin pk agm pet campus who is always cooperating and supporting with our program in all the ways thank you sir i would like to thank dr sajish ragunathan principal pa institute of physiotherapy and dr sayed amin ahmed dean student affairs pat and director cmsr for gracing the occasion by their valuable presence i also thank mr haris td for his gracious presence my sincere thanks to dr salimullah khan principal pa college of pharmacy and dr sarfraz j hashim principal pa first grade college for their help and support at various stages I would like to thank the people who worked behind the scene to make this event happen. Our site office team, physical director Dr. Iqbal, campus supervisor Mr. Rudresh, and housekeeping staff. I am very, I am very much thankful to all our HODs of various department, faculty members, and non-teaching staff members for making this event a successful one. I also wish to thank the students who have actively participated in this program. Thank you, my all my dear students. I also thank our media friend, Mr. Asif from Pasakural Channel. Thank you once again to every one of you present here for being a part of anti-drug and anti-ragging awareness program. Thank you, one and all.